Interesting question now. Um, Crispin, this is your question. Now, unfortunately, I can't seem to be able to copy and paste things straight into a new chat thing. So I have, I've typed a summary of it, but Crispin, please do. Uh, so th there is the summary question, um, just for people, for candidates to refer to. But Crispin, please do. Would you read it yourself, your original question in all its glory? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the original question, Having been granted a 10-year lease in the summer of 2019, the tenants of the United Downs Raceway, who organise stock car racing, a range of leisure activities and community projects at the site, then had the lease withdrawn by Cornwall Council in the spring of 2020. This later was exposed as a move <coughs> from Cornwall Council to allow the site to be developed into a rum warehouse, the plans for which were submitted in November 2020. The planning application for that remains undetermined and faces opposition from the Cornish Mining World Heritage Site Office, Historic England, Sport England and now UNESCO. What do the candidates think of the handling of the 10-year lease? Is the rum warehouse necessary to replace an existing leisure venue, including the raceway, which has been part of the fabric of the local community for more than 50 years? Thank you. So, as I say, there's, a, there's a, just a little sort of summary of the question there. Um, Matthew, perhaps you go first with that one. Yeah, I'm delighted to. Hi, Crispin. Thank you for the question. I think this actually highlights a really important issue that I'm keen to talk about on a, on a broader scale. I think the track has been treated appallingly, and I think the way that the planning application has been handled has been very poor to say the least. I don't understand why we can't ask difficult questions. I don't understand why that planning application has just been taken as some golden egg laying goose that's gonna provide jobs, that's gonna improve the area. And actually the minute you drill into the business plan, it got more holes than a Swiss cheese. And what we're looking to do is to, is to destroy a valuable piece of heritage. It would be bad if it stood to benefit the local community. If it was, you know, Connor started a, a fish and chip shop. If Connor wanted to start a rum warehouse in United Downs and use that geothermal heat, I would be picking Connor's business plan apart and telling him it made no sense at all. Now escalate that to another level. This is a company from Norfolk it's not local people it's not local money and the council have just rolled out the red carpet and steamrolled it over something that's that's brought an awful lot to this community and i think it's wrong i'm not suggesting for one minute that the rum warehouse is a bad idea per se but there are so many facets to that if i had 27 minutes i'd give you the whole rundown but read the business plan read the planning application if you've got any understanding of business it doesn't add up. If you care about the environment, the fact that they're using environmental issues to attack the track is a joke. And yet no one in the council seems prepared to stand up and actually question that at the defense of something that is intrinsically part of this area. And I think that's wrong. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Deborah. Thank you. And thank you, Crispin, for your question. Um, so I'm aware that the the track is a much loved and well used uh, local amenity, and I think it would be absolutely heartbreaking for the people that use it if it were to be closed. Um, I'm passionate about local heritage and the fact that UNESCO and the World Heritage Site have both indicated that they would not support the application speaks volumes. Um, I've had a look at the planning application and uh, I have to agree with Matthew, I can't really understand why we are considering allowing someone from outside of the county to, to come in and basically uh, ruin what is actually a, a real asset. Um, and I would be very, very uh, happy to support the uh, Crispin and the racetrack in whatever it is that I could do to help them continue to to be a part of the local community and um, I think planning is a real um, it's a real hot potato isn't it um, and 
as Matthew said, we're not always very good at asking the difficult questions. I'm very happy to ask difficult questions and, uh, and I would be very prepared to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Connor. Thanks, uh, Crispin, for the question. Um, I think the theme from both Deb uh, and Matthew's responses so far is that, is that we need whoever wins this election for someone to be able to and be prepared to ask the difficult questions. Uh, and actually, I have asked those difficult questions already um, because I've done my research with, you know, with the, the application and I'm going to echo what people, uh, candidates have already said, you know, the, the kind of the damning UNESCO report on the on the planning application. And I've actually attended the full council meeting and the most recent cabinet meeting asking the relevant planning uh, portfolio holder the question uh, which you said I think Cornwall Council have handed this lease signing process terribly. I think it's done some real damage to Cornwall Council's reputation within the community that I live in in Carrick uh, and also St Day where Matthew lives um, and because it is it is as much of an emotional connection uh, you know you speak to people who kind of say, well, you know, my family and my dad, and my grandfather, they all kind of learned that. And it's an emotional connection as well. Um, but I have through this process actually asked, asked those difficult, difficult questions. And I'm glad that Tim Dwelly, who's the relevant planning member in the last cabinet meeting, seemed to, to take action off the back of that question. He made a statement in the press uh, some time ago saying that if the planning application for the run warehouse was successful, that they would help uh, uh, auto speed find uh, suitable relocation sites. Uh, to the best of my knowledge and others, nothing had been done, no relocation no possible relocation sites had been identified or shared with auto speed uh, and after that meeting tim dwelly confirmed that he was uh, instructing his officers to look more closely in it so difficult questions have to be asked and we need a Cornwall councillor especially on this who is going to be prepared to ask the difficult questions to the relevant portfolio holders which i've already done thank you Thank you, Connor. And Mark? Yes, thank you. Uh, just to point out that this is not in the electoral division that we're representing, it's in Granite Division. But to answer Crispin's question, uh, the tenure lease wasn't signed. Uh, what it had to do before it was signed was go out to competitive tendering. And uh, Cornwall Council has got a duty to the taxpayer to make sure it gets the best value for money on, on assets as it owns. But the, the lease has been given to the people who are trying to build a rum distillery. No planning decision has actually been made. An application has been applied to. There's a separate plan application that's been supported on the opposite side of the road. And what you can't do as an elected councillor is divulge in confidential information. There's a lot of information going on behind the scenes. This has the full support of Sherilyn McCrory who's the, uh, the Conservative MP for that area. She, she supports this application and she supports this. Now, the whole thing is we talk about where these people come from, who's investing. I think PALS in, in Red Roof, which is in our, this electoral division, they're not Cornish. They employ you know, hundreds of people and lots of people re rely on them. So I don't think you should be attacking people from where they come from they want to set up, set up a business. What you've got to look at is why this business wants to set up there. Cornwall Council, the government and other bodies have invested in a borehole which is generating and will generate heat and electricity. And to have companies set up around that, it, it ticks all the boxes for Cornwall Council's climate change, emergency climate change. And if we're going to be serious about climate change, we've got to have businesses that that will use this energy. Now, I think, and Cornwall Council has made a pledge, it will do everything it can to work with the Raceway people to find an alternative site. I don't know where they are on that one, but what I have done, and I've made sure that the Raceway people have got a, another 12 months on that site. Now, they, they were given a, a, a relaxation on, on the rent they paid for that site last year, and, and I won't mention, well, I will mention, I had two complaints today about the noise. So, and it's very, really windy today. There are issues, there are, and it's a very, very difficult decision to make as a councillor. 
I, I wouldn't be voting on it, not if it's in my division, but I would be able to speak on it. It's not in my division, and if I'm elected, I will make a decision based on what's right for Cornwall, its environment, and the people who use that area. And it's, you, you can't be saying things and give pe build people's hopes up if you aren't going to stand by it. And you know, you've got to be very careful. And we do have confidential information as councillors, which we can't put in the public domain. And we get attacked all the time on Facebook and everything else, but we cannot. Uh, we're we're signed, signed to the code of conduct, but no other person here apart from Deborah has actually signed uh, that code of conduct. So we've got to be very careful on what we say. Thank you, Mark.